so let's begin um the last time we looked at uh, the inner product and uh, the cauchy schwartz inequality this was just a recap and then we discussed about orthonormal basis and some of their properties uh, and we went through the gram schmidt orthonormalization process which can be used to produce an orthonormal basis for the vector space spanned by a given set of vectors and then we looked at some properties of uh, orthonormal matrices so today we will talk about uh, two other topics the first is determinants and the other is norms so are there any questions about the previous class before we begin okay so we'll start talking about determinants so throughout we'll consider square matrices a is in r to the m by m okay so i think all of you certainly know what the determinant is is there anybody in the class who hasn't heard of or seen what a determinant is okay so i assume all of you know what it is but we'll just um, formally define it so that uh, we're all on the same page on this so if i consider the matrix aij to be the matrix obtained it's an m minus 1 cross m minus 1 matrix obtained by deleting the i throw and j th column okay then um we define determinant of aij which is the determinant of a slightly smaller matrix to be the minor associated with the element small aij okay and we define cij to be the cofactor of aij which is equal to minus 1 power i plus j times determinant of aij then this is the definition of the determinant of a this is called the cofactor expansion so the way we define the determinant here it's a recursive definition the determinant of a matrix of size m by m is defined in terms of the determinant of a smaller size matrix of size m minus 1 by m minus 1 so determinant of a is equal to the summation uh, j equal to 1 to m a i j times c i j and note that there is a floating index i here i belonging to 1 to up to and i can also define it to be the summation over i going from 1 to m aij cij and now there is a floating coefficient j here and i can compute this for any j okay so there are basically um uh, m squared ways of uh, compute sorry 2m ways of computing the determinant and they all give the same answer okay so there are uh, two m ways of computing the determinant and all these give the same value
So this is another surprising fact about matrices is that you take a square matrix and uh, there are two m different ways, seemingly different ways of computing the determinant. But whichever way you do it, you always get the same answer. How do we see this? Uh, in fact, there's a, it's not that difficult. All you have to do is to take the trouble to write out what the determinant expansion would be. And when you write it out, you see that actually, the, whichever way you, you write this expression out, it's all the same terms that will finally show up in the determinant uh, formula. And that's why they all actually should have the same value. Now, in order to complete this uh, definition, I need to know what, how to compute the determinant of a one cross one matrix because Cij itself is something that is minus one power i plus j times determinant of an m minus one by m minus one matrix. So determinant of a single element or a scalar is that value itself. So this is a recursive definition. Okay, and uh, yeah, so I think uh, so. This is the this is the basic definition of a determinant. Now um, we'll discuss many properties of uh, the determinant, but maybe um, just to keep the order here. Um, um, one uh, so I'll just make uh, one or two small remarks. One is that. Uh, um, if A is a triangular matrix, then the determinant is equal to the product of the diagonal entries. Then, um, okay, and then and then uh, the other thing is that uh, if uh, mod of the determinant of A is the is, is called the principal volume of a matrix. So this is the volume uh, uh, of a parallel pipette uh, who's uh, defined by the columns of Sir, yeah. Uh, can we define determinant for a non-square matrix? No, it's only for square matrices. So at the starting line, you define a matrix A, which belongs to R power M cross N, which is a non-square matrix, right? M by M. Maybe my handwriting is not clear, but this is M cross M. Okay, okay, okay. thanks, thank you. OK, so this is the volume of a parallel pipe defined by the columns of A. Uh, so for example, um, if I, I can only show you things on a two-dimensional case. So if I define vectors associated with uh, the two columns of A, so let's say it is um, 2, 3, and uh, uh, 5, something like this. Then I take two along the x-axis and then three along the y-axis. This is a vector that looks something like this. And then I take five along the x-axis and I take four along the y-axis. This is another vector like this. So I use these two and complete a parallel pipette. And then I look at what is this area. So that's what I mean by the volume of a parallel pipette defined by the columns of A. This is called the principal volume of a matrix. And this also happens to be equal to the magnitude of the determinant of A. The other small point I want to say is that this is a 
मल्टीलिनियर फंक्शन ऑफ ए दैट इज इट्स एक्चुअली लीनियर इन ईच एलिमेंट बाय इट सेल्फ um but it's a combination of various terms so the same element could potentially uh the, so so it's a combination of various terms involving different elements of a so just to you know make this point clear i'll actually take the trouble to write out the determinant of a 3 cross 3 matrix and we also write it in this way if i two put two bars around it that can also denote the determinant but for the moment i won't do that because um, you can see here i'm using the two bars to denote the magnitude so this determinant of this is equal to a11 a23 uh, sorry A two two, A three three, minus A one one, A three two, A two three, minus A two one, A one two, A three three, plus A two one, A three two. A one three plus A three one, A one two, A two three minus A three one, A two two, A one three. So if you take any one element, like for example A one one, it appears in two terms, and it's a linear term. that appears here so for example if i unilaterally increase a11 then the value of the determinant will also unilaterally will also linearly change it's a linear function of a11 by itself and if i take a22 a22 appears here and here it also appears in exactly two terms if i take a33 it appears here and here also appears in exactly two terms and so on and each term contains three terms from this which is the size of the matrix so this is 3 cross 3 so each uh, each term that appears here contains exactly three terms and then there are total of six terms and each term appears linearly in it so it's a multilinear function of the entries of a sir yeah so could you explain what is the meaning of multilinear it's linear but there are multiple terms each of them being linear so when you have a single variable you you know that the the variable could the 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 function could be linear or non linear but when you have multiple variables then it could be linear in each component but then it could be the sum of many such terms so for example if if i had a function like um a11 A one two, A one three, A two one, A two two, A two three, A three one, A three two, A three three. This is also a multilinear function of A. It's linear in every one of the components. So But here you have a sum of multiple such terms. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, go ahead. But here it's not. Sufficient to scale just one element, right? We'll have to scale either one whole row or one whole uh, column to scale the determinant. No, no, no. I'm just looking at what happens to the determinant if you were to scale one particular entry of the matrix. It will become different. It won't. Uh, the determinant won't be scaled then, because no. uh, the element A11 no. appears only on no, two no, of no. these. Think of it no. this way. Suppose I consider a matrix T five. Three and four, okay. And I say so. Suppose this is a matrix B, and then I call f of t equals determinant B. So this is actually a function of t of t. So 
So if I define f of t, b, t to be determinant of b of t, then f of t is linear. In, yes, yes. This is what I'm trying to say. Okay, sir. Okay, this is for this ticket here. Okay, now um, there is an alternative definition which is uh, sometimes useful by itself. Uh, okay, so it is through three properties. So the first is that the determinant of the identity matrix is always equal to one, no matter what the size of the identity matrix is. Two, the determinant changes sign when two rows are exchanged. And three, the determinant depends linearly on the first row. So any function sat which satisfies these three properties is a valid definition of a determinant. So basically what we are doing here is we are mapping a matrix to a number. And any mapping of a matrix to a number which satisfies these three properties is in fact a valid definition for the determinant and it's the same definition as what we discussed earlier. Okay, so this is another definition. So just for you and we'll come back to this uh, later when it's useful. Okay, so now um, several uh, properties. Um, well, but before I discuss these properties, uh, maybe I'll just explain what I mean by this. So if I take a matrix, um, uh, say, determinant of A, B, C, D, this is equal to AD minus BC, which is equal to the negative of the determinant of the matrix C, D, A, P. And uh, also, uh, if I take a permutation matrix, so for the moment, just keep in mind, or I'll just say that a permutation matrix is a matrix obtained by exchanging so this is my shorthand notation for exchanging rows of the identity matrix okay this is some uh, some one way to think of a permutation matrix uh, a permutation matrix if i denote it by p then um, uh, then determinant of p is always equal to plus or minus one. So for any permutation matrix, since the it's obtained by exchanging rows of the identity matrix, and when you exchange rows, the sign of the determinant changes. Um, the determinant of P is plus or minus the determinant of the identity matrix, which is equal to one. And by linear on in the first row, what I mean is that uh, if I take the matrix, uh, uh, so determinant of A plus A dash, B plus B dash, C, D, this is equal to determinant of A, B, C, D plus the determinant of A dash, B dash, C, D. So I can take linear combinations of the first row or any row uh, and the determinant can be split as the determinant of not linear combinations. I can consider the first 
rho to be a linear combination of two vectors a b and a dash b dash then the determinant splits as the sum of determinants the first where being the determinant where the first vector is the first row the second being the determinant of the matrix where the second vector is the first row um, and similarly if i take determinant of the matrix T A, T B, C D. This is equal to T times the determinant of A, B, C and T. So it's linear in the first row. But very important is that determinant of B plus C is not equal to determinant of B plus determinant of C in general. So here it is true. When B and C differ only in one row, then determinant of B plus C is equal to determinant of B plus determinant of C. But in general, it's not true. And further, determinant of say T times A is not equal to T times determinant of A. It's only when you scale a single row that the determinant scales by the same factor T. Okay, so now we'll discuss several properties of the determinant. One, if two rows of A are equal, then what happens to the determinant? Zero. Zero. Exactly. The second property. So why is this true? It's because um, if I exchange a pair of rows, if, if two rows are equal, let me exchange those two rows. The matrix remains the same, but the determinant is supposed to have changed the sign. But the only number which when you change its sign uh, is remains the same number is zero. So that's why the determinant is zero. Um, Subtracting a multiple, so if you do a like an elementary row operation, subtracting a multiple row from another row, it leaves the determinant unchanged. So subtracting or adding is the same thing. A multiple of one row from another row. leaves the determinant unchanged. Hello. Yes, please. Uh, sir, uh, uh, in the previous section, uh, you specifically uh, mentioned about uh, the first uh, row. It is linear with respect to first row. Uh, what about, sir, other rows? Uh, they'll be same. Oh. So what do you think? Sir, uh, I think same. For yes. And why do you think so? Uh, so all you do is if you are uh, uh, if you take a linear uh, so if, if some other row is a sum of two two vectors, what you do is you exchange that with the first row. The determinant okay. changes the sign. Now you yeah, apply yeah. this rule. Now you get two different matrices. Now you exchange the rows, rows back. It changes sign again and goes back to the original determinant. Yeah, so minus minus value. will be plus again, so it will determine. Exactly. Okay, sir, got it. So that's because if I take like this, what I've done is I've, multi I've subtracted L times the second row from the first row. Now I can use my rules, namely that if I if 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 I look at a matrix where the first row is the sum of two terms, then I can split it as the sum of two determinants. So I've written the first determinant here, A B C D, and the second determinant is like a determinant of minus L C 
minus LD CD, but the first row is being scaled by a factor T, which is equal to minus L here. So I can pull that minus L out and write this as determinant of CD and CD. And this determinant is zero because two rows are identical. And so, um, and so then uh, the determinant of the matrix remains unchanged if you subtract a multiple of the second row from the first row. See, I'm showing you this proof for the two, two cross two case, but uh, please keep in mind that showing a proof for a two cross two case is not really a proof. Um, I'm showing it for the two cross two case in, in this example because the same exact thing can be done for a three cross three or a four cross four or eight cross eight or any size n cro m cross m case. Okay, the same the same idea exactly holds. And so there is uh, no harm in this particular case to consider a two cross two case and say what is happening. <coughs> Hello, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir, sign now determinant also get changed when we exchange the columns. Um, yes, and that will be obvious in a second um, because uh, it turns out determinant of A is equal to the determinant of A transpose and exchanging columns is the same as exchanging rows of A transpose. OK, sir. And uh, so this is obvious again because uh, if A has a row of zeros, all you have to do is to add one other row to this row of zeros. And because uh, adding a row or a multiple of a row to another row remain, leaves the determinant unchanged, the determinant does not change. But now you have a matrix with two identical rows. Then by property one, the determinant of A is zero. The other way to do is to think of it is to think of the cofactor expansion formula where you're expanding along that row, which is the row of zeros. And if you're expanding along the row of zeros, then you uh, the coefficient of every term in the cofactor expansion is zero. So it only it can only add up to zero. This is a property I already said. Which is if A is triangular. Then determinant of A. A11, A22, up to AMM. -M. Okay, so basically, uh, for triangular matrices, the determinant can be obtained by just taking the product of the diagonal entries. So, in particular, um, uh, remember that uh, the um, you get the row reduced echelon form by doing elementary row operations. And these elementary row operations um, involve either subtracting a multiple of a given row from another row or exchanging rows. So if you exchange rows, the sign of the determinant will change. If you multiply, if subtract a multiple of a row from another row, then the determinant will, uh, will remain unchanged. And so when you do these elementary row operations, you will get a matrix which is ultimately upper triangular. And for upper triangular matrices, the determinant is the product of the diagonal elements. And therefore, uh, one way to compute the determinant of a matrix is to first perform the uh, find the row reduced echelon form and then take the, the product of the diagonal elements. And then you also keep track of how many row exchanges you had to do while in the process of finding the row reduced echelon form. If you had to do an even number of row exchanges, then the determinant is simply the product of the pivot elements. If you had to do an odd number of row exchanges, then the determinant is the negative of the product of the pivot elements. So, um, so basically this implies determinant is of the pivot elements. in the row reduced echelon form. 
okay and plus if even number of row exchanges minus if odd Um, so basically, uh, maybe to just write this determinant of, in the case of a two cross two, you can see it immediately. A B zero D. Is Hello, sir. To, yeah. Uh, sir, um, can you please uh, explain the point number three uh, uh, using pro uh, properties one and two? So if A has a row of zeros. To do is to add one of the other rows to the zero row that doesn't change the determinant. Then um, now you have a, a matrix where two rows are identical, and by property one, determinant of A is zero. Okay, okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, now uh, for this uh, for this property to see that if A is triangular, then determinant of A is zero. Then uh, the one way to see that is um, um suppose the diagonal entries are non zero okay then you have a matrix so i'll just show this in a picture to give you the idea but um, or actually i'll just write this in the case as a sort of example to give you the idea but the arguments hold in the general case so I have A11, A12, say upper triangular, A13, 0, A22, A23, and 0, 0, A33. Then what I can do is I can subtract a multiple of the third row from the second row such that this entry A23 becomes 0. So I'll just write that here. So I'll replace R2 with R2 minus A23 over A33 times R3. Then this gives me a matrix A11, A12, A13. 0. Now, A22 will remain unchanged. And this becomes 0. 0, 0, A33. Then I can do something similar like uh, replace R1 with R1 minus A13 over A33 times R3. And then I can again replace R1 with R1 minus A12 over A22 times R2. Then what happens is both these terms get eliminated and you will be left with A11000, 0, 0, 0, A220, 0, 0, 0, A33. So basically, if it's an upper triangular matrix uh, or even a lower triangular matrix with the diagonal entries being non zero, then you can do one more round of elimination and reduce it down to a diagonal matrix and in in these process in this process i've only subtracted multiples of a row from another row and uh, so that doesn't change the determinant i have not changed the determinant throughout this process so the determinant of this matrix here is the same as this determinant of a diagonal matrix but for a diagonal matrix the determinant is very easy to find what i do is i first recognize that I can take out A11 from this because it's linearly dependent on the first row. It's linearly dependent on A11. So if I take this matrix and let me call it D, then determinant of D is equal to A11 times the determinant of this matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, A22, 0, 0, 0, A33. 
Then what I can do in this matrix is I can exchange the second row and the first row. And then I know that it's the determinant has changed sign, but I'll keep that in mind. Now in the first row, it's linear in A22. So I can pull out an A22. And then I can once again exchange rows one and two. So the determinant will once again change sign. It will be back to the same old sign as, as here. So I can write this as A11, A22, determinant of 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, A33. And then I can pull out A33 and write this as equal to A11, A22, A33 times the determinant of the identity matrix, which is equal to A11, A22, A33. So it's the product of these diagonal entries. So suppose the diagonal entries are non-zero, then um, I can use elimination. So that means that uh, the determinant remains unchanged. Also, the diagonal entries remain unchanged. And thirdly, the off diagonal entries are eliminated. So now we are left with a diagonal matrix. So by properties two and three, determinant of, okay, let me write it a little more systematically. If D is D one one zero D two two D M M, then determinant of D is equal to D one one D two two D M M. Therefore, is the product i equal to 1 to m a i i for triangular a. Of course, if the diagonal entry is 0, what happens? If you do this elimination step, you will get an all zero row. Which means that determinant is zero. OK, so let's continue. So the next property is that uh, determinant actually tells you, if you can evaluate the determinant, it tells you whether the matrix is singular or non-singular. So if A is singular, so basically, uh, what is a singular matrix? A singular matrix is a matrix which is not invertible. So if A is singular, then determinant of A is zero. zero. Is invertible. Determinant of A is non-zero. Okay, so Basically, the idea is that if A is singular, 
then it has um, uh, it has a rank which is less than m, which means that it has dependent rows. And so uh, we will study this later, but uh, basically you can compute um, what is known as an LU decomposition of a matrix, where L is a lower triangular matrix, and um, uh, uh, it's the, it is the row reduction matrix, which has once along its diagonal, and U is an upper triangular matrix. So, um, so basically, I'll, I'll just make some small note on this. If A equals LU, where L is lower triangular with ones on the diagonal and u is upper triangular then uh, l basically represents the row reduction matrices l is the product of the row reduction matrices which does not change the determinant. Sir? Yeah. Sir, should you also have all the diagonal elements as one? No. Okay. So U has, um, uh, has the pivot elements along the diagonal. Uh, but uh, there is another decomposition which we, we will study. The, I'm not uh, going into the detail here because we're going to study these decompositions of matrices uh, separately later on. Um, the other way to think about it is you can also do something like, and also I have not considered the case where you are using, you may have to do uh, row exchanges in order to find this LU decomposition. The more general thing is, the, is actually PA equals L D U decomposition where L and U are lower triangular and upper triangular with ones on the diagonal and D is a diagonal matrix. and P is a permutation matrix. Okay, this is the more general form, uh, but uh, for now, uh, I'm just giving you a little feel for why it is true that uh, determinant of A equal to zero for a singular matrix. So if you consider this, um, if you consider the process of doing the row reduction, the <laughs> sequence of steps involved in the row reduction can be consolidated. Each one, each, uh, each row reduction step is actually a linear transform. So what you're doing is a sequence of linear transform, transforms, and the effect of all those linear transforms is the product of all those linear transformation matrices. And that is, an, is a matrix L, which has ones on the diagonal, okay, and it's a lower triangular matrix. So basically, um, since each step involved is a lower is a row reduction step, uh, it does not change the determinant. And as a consequence, determinant of A is actually equal to the determinant of U, which will be zero if A is singular. Since A as dependent rows okay so if a has dependent rows um, then u has as an all zero row so if if this is true okay, let me put it this way u has and all zero row.
Okay, so then determinant is zero. But if A is non-singular, then you will have the pivots. Say I can call them D1 to Dm on the diagonal of U. So, but so determinant of U will be equal to D1, D2 up to Dm, which is equal to determinant of U. So I want to be a little careful here, and so I'm going to write it in this way. Plus or minus this is equal to the determinant of A, in the sense that when I started out here, I assumed that there is no row exchange operation that was performed. So determinant of A is either determinant of U or minus determinant of U, depending on row exchanges. Sir? Yeah. Sir, uh, when you call this pivot element, so it's just uh, another name for diagonal elements? Yes. OK, OK, sir, thank you. So in the context of uh, um, matrix factorization, the factors that come out when you do the row reduction operation, um, when you do the row reduction operation, the, the, the diagonal entries of the reduced matrix are called pivot elements. So maybe one way to think about it is that I can ask what are the diagonal elements of any matrix, but these diagonal elements may not be equal to the pivot elements. Okay, but the diagonal elements will be equal to the pivot elements for triangular matrices. For non-triangular matrices, the diagonal elements will not be equal to the pivot elements. The pivot elements are obtained by taking the diagonal entries of the row reduced matrix. Does that answer okay. your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It makes sense. Thank you, sir. Property six is very important and uh, um, also uh, a property that is again to me really not obvious determinant of the product of two matrices is equal to what product of determinants yeah how does one show that determinant of a b equals determinant of a times determinant of b Before I discuss that, one immediate consequence is that if AB is the identity matrix, then B is the inverse of A, then the determinant of the identity matrix is 1. And therefore, we can say that determinant of the inverse of A, when A is invertible, is equal to 1 over the determinant of A. Because determinant, so determinant of AB is 1, which is uh, because AB is the identity matrix and on the right hand side I have determinant of A times determinant of A inverse. So the determinant of A inverse is 1 over the determinant of A. I'll uh, give you one proof um, here. The, there's another proof in the textbook which you can potentially look up on your own. So one, uh, one simple proof is like this. Um, if I consider a function d of a, which I define to be equal to determinant of a b divided by determinant of b. Now I'm assuming here that b is non-singular so that its determinant is non-zero, but that is okay because if b were singular, then uh, we know that the rank of a matrix cannot increase when you multiply it by another matrix. So the, if, if B is singular, then AB or if B is rank deficient, then AB is also rank deficient. And therefore, determinant of AB will be zero. And the right side is also equal to zero because it's determinant of A times determinant of B, which is equal to zero. And so if, if, uh, if determinant of B is zero, then the result determinant of AB equals determinant of A times determinant of B is obvious. 
So we'll consider the case where determinant of B is not equal to zero and consider this function D of A defined to be determinant of AB divided by determinant of B. Now, uh, if I look at the alternative definition of the de determinant, a so this is now a function of A, it's mapping A to a number. It's mapping it to this particular number, determinant of AB divided by determinant of B. Now it has the following properties. One, D of the identity matrix. If I replace A with the identity matrix, I have determinant of B divided by determinant of B equal to one, two, D of A changes sign to rows of A are exchanged. That's because if I exchange two rows of A, then I also end up exchanging the same two rows of AB. Because exchanging rows can be can be thought of as left multiplication by a permutation matrix. And so exchanging rows of A is the same as I mean, the effect of uh, exchanging a pair of rows of A on the pr product AB is the same as exchanging those two rows of AB. And so D of A changes sign when two rows of A are exchanged and three D of A depends linearly on the first row. So it satisfies the alternative definition. So this you just think through a little bit, you'll see it's true. It's because this determinant A B here depends linearly on the first row of A. Um, so uh, basically this means that it satisfies the three properties I'd say the alternative definition. Of determinant and so which implies D of A is nothing but determinant of A. And so determinant of A B, determinant of A equals determinant of A B divided by determinant of B, meaning that determinant of A B equals determinant of A times determinant of B.